The U.S. military remains ready and continues to operate around the world, and that includes providing personnel supplies and support to the public health crisis here at home. I also want to start by offering condolences to the families of those we have lost to COVID-19. And our top priority remains the safety and protection of our troops and families from COVID-19, especially our more than 50,000 service members, which includes more than 4,200 doctors, nurses, and medical personnel currently deployed across the United States working to protect the American people. The United States military continues to support the whole of government in response to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Our COVID operations have evolved here in the Pentagon and in our combatant commands. As you know, it was a very, very intense and active period the first few weeks here in the Pentagon. Uh, but now our operations are starting to smooth out and normalize. We still have more people engaged now than we did before, and that still increases every day. But it's similar to any other operation we have going on around the globe, whether it's the Middle East or the Pacific or, or the Europe, wherever. For example, if we have an operation, one of the priority jobs of the Joint Staff and the Secretary of Defense is to quick, quickly push forces to a combatant commander. In other words, the combatant commander will make the request to the Secretary of Defense, and then we work to get them the forces. When we lay down the forces, we lay them down where the combatant commander requests. In this case, FEMA is working together with Northern Command, General O'Shaughnessy, to figure out where the forces go. And once the forces get there, they're now General O'Shaughnessy's forces, and he can move them as he needs. The Pentagon role begins to lessen, which is where we are now, starting to normalize. General O'Shaughnessy keeps us informed, but we don't have to move the forces for him or to him for the most part. If he needs something else, he'll come to us and ask, and we'll push those forces. But he has significant forces now spread out across the country. Uh, supporting uh, General O'Shaughnessy and FEMA is still our top priority, but now we're starting to get time to think about what comes next as well. So the other piece I want to quickly highlight is to expand what the deputy just talked about in terms of testing. So we're creating a new framework for COVID testing in the department. We're moving from a, di a diagnostic focus to a, di a diagnostic plus screening focus. In other words, that means we have the ability to expand our testing uh, capabilities to wider military populations, prioritizing the highest risk to forces and ensuring our strategic uh, mission assurance. And as testing supplies become more prevalent over the coming weeks and months, we'll continue to apply that testing along with social distancing, facial coverings, quarantines, the other things the deputy mentioned where necessary, and, and we'll work our way through tiers. The Secretary of Defense recently approved tiers for our forces to prioritize where we apply the testing concept the Secretary just uh, described to you. Tier one, critical national capabilities, like our strategic deterrent, our nuclear deterrent. Tier two, engaged fielded forces around the world. Tier three, the four deployed and redeploying forces. And tier four, the other forces. So we've already started with Tier 1, focusing our supplies and efforts on these critical forces, like our strategic deterrent, making sure that they're always full up, always ready to go. It's important to note that testing by itself, as the Secretary de uh, described, does not enable us at this time to improve our readiness uh, and availability. Testing alone does not do that. However, it is a powerful tool that's helpful when complying with quarantine and the other public health items that can improve our overall force availability. So we're working with HHS, FEMA, the White House, and industry to turn what currently is a testing supply problem into a logistics problem. Because when it becomes a logistics problem, that's something we're really good at. So I want to close by thanking all the servicemen and women, especially our medical professionals, our reservists, our guardsmen, that are deployed in harm's way today. I want to recognize each and every one of them who are in this fight. Uh, they're bringing extraordinary skills honed over, the last, honed over the last two decades in the most challenging scenarios now to the fight against COVID-19. The readiness of our military is strong. We're still capable. We're still ready no matter what the threat. No one should doubt the readiness of our military to respond and defend the American people whenever required. So with that, uh, we're more than happy to take your questions.